Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm going to be continuing the Unity Editor Fundamentals. We're going to be focusing on the console. How do we actually get messages to the console? So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys. So here we are in Unity and I'm going to show you what I'm going to be creating today, which is a new script that is going to allow us to send messages to the console. So this is a scene that we created last time. We had basically items falling into the ground and we were detecting collisions. So if you haven't watched the previous video, make sure that you watch the previous video on collisions. So what is the console and why would you need it? And so the console, it's very common to have a console in applications like this, in softwares like this, like Unity or Unreal or any type of you know IDE and by IDE I, I mean an integrated development environment which is a place where that you use to create games to create applications so anytime you want to find issues with your code or issues with you know anything that you might might be needing if you have a bug or if you have you know any type of issue you always have to find that information through either going through logs or finding that information through a console so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be looking at the console, which I don't see open right now. So we're gonna click on window and then general and console to open it up. And since we're gonna be focusing on this in this session, I'm gonna be focusing on that area. So let me, I'm gonna change some of the panels and we're gonna just make it bigger than almost anything that we have on the screen. So, so what I wanna do is right now, if you remember when I hit play, everything it's going to fall down and it's going to go through and you can see that we have we have items in the console so what i'm going to do is i'm going to disable the script that we have to create you know these messages and and focus on creating new messages so that we can see what we can do with the console so if we go to the let me see where we put those we created a ground and okay yeah in the ground we have a script called collision detector so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to, basically what we can do is just disable, disable, we could disable the ground, but it's going to, it's going to not show us our ground and that's, and I really wanna see that. So what I'm gonna do for now, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and remove that component. So if you, if you didn't see what I did, just click on the gear and then remove for the component that is called collision detector. Okay, once we have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new script to that component so we're gonna click on add component and then new script. And then this script, we can call it debugger example. And we can hit enter. And now we have that script associated with it. So what I'm gonna do, instead of having it in the, in the root folder, drag it and drop it into scripts. So by the end of this video, you should have you know at least two scripts in there. And, and it's always a good idea to keep them in the same folder so that you know where your scripts are. Okay, so if we go back to the ground, we can see that we have that new script associated with our ground. So double click on the debugger example. And excellent. So now we have this window open. And what I'm going to do is, let's say that we wanted to know, you know, on star what the name of this class was or what the name of this game object was. So like I was saying on, on previous videos, we're going to go through the life cycle of a game. And, and that's what I'll do in the next video. For now, just know that star it's going to execute you know when the game starts and basically when we hit play so if we wanted to to show some messages to basically to ourselves for troubleshooting we could say debug which i used in the previous video and i can say the debugger example is starting and i can do something like this so now if i go back into unity and we hit play and give it a few seconds here, we can see that the debugger example is starting. So what if you wanted to know where that message it was coming from? Because we have so many different game objects and this is nothing. I mean, when you create a game, you, you might have hundreds, you might have a couple, and, and, a, and a lot of times it's really hard to find where those messages are coming from. So it's a good idea to, to either know where it's coming from. So to do that, you could do something like this. I could say, you know, we could give it the name of the of the game of the game object. So to do that, we can say we can add a space here, and I can say game object that name, and I can say plus symbol, 
And in fact, we could put it in parentheses so it's easier to see what the game object name is. Excellent. Now, if we go back into Unity and we hit play, we should see that that message is going to change. So we're hitting play now, and we can see that that message is coming from the ground. So let's say that we add that script to every one of these objects right here. So I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to say debugger example and associate it with those. Now we can hit play and see what happens. So we can see that Sphere 1 is also has, you know, has a message, Sphere 3, and we know all the different game objects that we have in the scene that have that same script associated with it. So what if we wanted to do something more, you know, more helpful? Maybe we wanted to know, you know, the, the Y position of each one of these objects. So what we can do with that is we can execute it on every frame, which is going to be on the update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the debug.log. And we're still going to show the game object, that name, because I want to know the coordinate, the position of that object, and I want to know which object it is that is moving. So what I'm going to do here is we can add another message, game object, that name is a position. And we can say what position it is. And for that, we can say we can add game object, that transform. And we can say position. And I can actually display the entire position, which is going to be a vector 3. So that's going to have an x, y, and z. Even though the only one that is moving right now is y, we could see all three of them at once. So if I go back into Unity and hit play, it's going to be really hard to see because that's going to show for every frame. But we can see here, you know, sphere underscore 3. Here's the position. And they're falling, you know, into in, into nowhere because there's really nothing that is stopping them. So they keep going down and down and, and you can see that X is a sting and Z is a sting and Y is the only thing that is changing because they're falling, they're on a free fall. And we can see, you know, all the different objects and look at their positions, which is, which is really helpful in times if we want to do, you know, if we're trying to find out what where the object is and, and how it's interacting with other game objects. So let me play again one more time. So the other thing that we can do is, let's say that we, we didn't really want to do this for every frame. We only, we only wanted to do it on the start, so we can easily move it and just do it right on the start. Go back to Unity and hit play. So we can see that, you know, we got all the positions. We got the, we know what script is running, the console message. We can see that that object, that game object, is fear underscore one, is that 1.2, 3.1, and negative 8.6. And we can see the same thing for all the other game objects. Excellent. So what if we wanted to know only the Y position instead of you know displaying displaying everything? So what I can do is I'm going to comment this out, and I can paste the debug.log. And instead of saying transform that position, we can say transform the position that Y. We could do the same thing with X and Z. So let's go back into Unity, hit play, and see what happens. So now we don't get a vector 3, which is that number that was surrounding with parentheses. Actually, the three numbers that were sur surrounded by parentheses. Now we see just one value, and that value is only Y. So, so that's really helpful if you, if you don't really need to know X, because you know that X is not going to change, or if C is not going to change. So that's really all I wanted to show you. In, well, before we keep, before we wrap it up, let me show you one more thing, and and that's going to be some of the options that we have in here, that are that are really important. So let's say that we didn't want to lose the messages because we were troubleshooting, and you wanted to know what was you know what the values were before we hit play. So if we disable clear on play, the messages are not going to be clear when we when we hit play. So let's click on it and hit play one more time, and that's perfect. The, the other thing that we can do here is we could collapse some, some of the messages. So let's say if this message was displayed multiple times, which looks like it is, you're going to get a count instead of, you know, one message per line. So you can use the collapse to do that, especially when you have a lot of different messages that are just the same. So you can use that. You can also clear it yourself. And of course, this other editor is if you want to attach a debugger, meaning that you want to attach to another processor another process if let's say that you have this app running in the in iOS 
you could easily attach it to an IP address, you can attach it to a USB, a serial port, and, and so on. So that's what editor is. Error on pass is another thing that is really helpful that I that I use in the past. And I'll go through exceptions in one of the next videos, but the way that this works is if we if we really want the game to stop playing, if we have an error somewhere in the game, let's say that for some reason we have a bug and it threw an exception. So error on pass is gonna allow us to pass the game whenever we have an exception. But if we wanna ignore those and we wanna keep going because we know that we're gonna get an exception for whatever reason, then you can click on, you can disable it, and that's gonna keep playing the game even though we're getting an exception. So that's really mo most of everything. This, these other buttons that we have in here, if you wanna display, you know, if you wanna display errors or warnings, then you can, you know, you can toggle some of these buttons as, as well. And of course, you can move the console around as you need to, just like you can move the every other panel in Unity. So that's everything that I wanted to, gonna, I wanted to show you guys. If you, have, you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments. And don't forget to share and subscribe to the channel.